Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay Zhao. I'm a director of Delos Labs. I'm a member of the Well Living Lab. Um, we're talking about thermal comfort today. Uh, what do we know about thermal comfort? Um, when people talk about thermal comfort, we always mix the term temperature with thermal comfort. It's very, very relevant. It's a very strong correlation, but it's not the whole thing. Thermal comfort actually is a subjective uh, satisfaction rate, uh, how people feeling in their environment um, thermally. Uh, it's a seven scale subjective rating of how are you feeling hot or cold. Um, basically, if you are feeling okay or feeling comfortable, you are at zero. That's a numeric uh, scale. If you're feeling hot, feeling warm, you're going up. One means slightly warm, two means warm, three means really hot. I'm, I'm so hot right now. Um, on the other end, if you're negative one, it means slightly cold or slightly cool. Uh, then negative two means cool, negative three means cold. So how did they develop this? How do, how, how do people associate this number with a um, model, a mathematical model to really calculate people's uh, thermal comfort? Uh, the, the person who developed th this is called Professor Fanger. He basically recruited about hundreds of uh, subjects into the chamber and uh, gave them different temperature, different humidity, different airspeed. They asked them to put on different clothing. They asked them to run before the study and they gave them different uh, radiators in the room to, to um, uh, record all these variables and then associate those hard measurements with people's subjective feedback of negative th three or positive two. So associate or correlate subjective feelings with those hard measurements and see what are the hard measurements has most impact on this and what, what are the mathematical regression uh, equations between those two. So that's what he did. <coughs> um, and what are the variables? There are six major variables that can impact your thermal comfort. One is metabolic rate. <coughs> it's measured by MET. <coughs> One MET equals 58.2 watt per square meters. This measures the energy produced per unit surface area of the average person seated uh, at rest. Um, if you, it's sometimes you are feeding um, and different person and different activities will have different type, uh, different MET uh, numbers. Uh, <coughs> um, um, typ typically, you know, on average, kids have higher rates of uh, MET. Um, its metabolic rate is faster. Uh, elderly, you know, senior people will have less MET, which means if you have higher MET, your thermal comfort, you will, you have a tendency to, to feel more warm. So means you can tolerate more colder, colder, much colder environment. If you have a lower metabolic rate, you cannot tolerate colder environment. You, you prefer warmer environment. And, <coughs> and uh, in general, women has a lower rate of met than men. Uh, that is why in offices, there's a very famous study. A lot of women complain about uh, office temperatures, um, but less men complain about that because men typically has higher uh, metabolic rate. Uh, clothing insulation, that's very easy to understand. Um, it's how, how much clothes you have on, your, on you. One clothes means you are basically, uh, I'm wearing this, that's um, um, one cloth. That's the measurement uh, cloth. 
Um, if you're wearing shorts, the number will be lower. If you're wearing uh, thicker clothes, the number is higher. Um, <coughs> again, this has a bigger Clow has a very bigger, has, has pretty significant impact on your thermal comfort. And the easiest and the most intuitive thing people can change their thermal comfort is not go to the wall, change thermostat, is to put on a sweater or take off the jacket. So that's, uh, that's called adaptive thermal uh, regulation by, by humans. So these two, um, those two were uh, about humans, about um, about the property <laughs> or, or the biological features and also your behavior. Um, there are other environmental conditions that impact your thermal comfort. Uh, <coughs> first one is air temperature. That's everyone knows this. Temperature <laughs> is a huge indicator on h how you're feeling cold or hot. Uh, air velocity, air speed. Um, Stronger wind or stronger airspeed will make you feel colder. That's how fan, ceiling fan or desk fan works uh, in offices. Um, the fan doesn't decrease the temperature of the air, but it will increase the airspeed, so you will feel more uh, comfortable or feel more colder, much colder, um, but that's, that's only your feeling, not the actual air temperature. Relative humidity, this is a very critical issue. Um, in everyday weather forecast, you will see two temperatures. One is called the real temperature. The other temperature is feels like temperature. Feels like temperature is a temperature of, um, of a combination of temperature and humidity. So humidity, ha which means Humidity has an impact on what you feel like, which is a thermal thing. <coughs> humidity has um, impact mostly for your uh, in summertime, because in summertime when humidity is high, uh, the temperature you are feeling, although at the same temperature, if humidity is higher, your feeling will be warmer or hotter. Um, the last one, mean reading temperature is kind of very hard to understand. Uh, this definition is very um, abstract and uh, uh, basically it means <coughs> we know the air temperature, we can feel the air temperature, but at the same time we can also feel the radiant temperature on a radiant, um, on radiant surface. For example, this thing here, it generates heat. So if I close to this, this side of my body will feel the radiant heat coming from this subject, not from the air. Uh, but this side is okay. I'm not feeling this radiant heat. So this is called a thermal desymmetry. Means <coughs> Your <coughs> although the air temperature is just right, but because of something hot or cold, it could be a cold window in, win in winter, and next to it, part of your body, <coughs> excuse me, part of my body will feel cold, part of my body is okay, and this will make your thermal discomfort, will, will make you feel either hotter or colder. Uh, and uh, the mean radiant temperature means the average radiant temperature on your head, on your feet, on this side, this side, front, back. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the factor that impacts your thermal comfort. Um, so basically those are six major factors that impact your thermal comfort. Every study has li limitations. This model ha best described uh, thermal comfort generically uh, for majority of people, but there are flaws, for example, this model, uh, the subjects, the professor used to develop this model only includes white male, adult white male. Women were not included in this model. Minorities were not included in this model. It, it maybe makes sense in, at that time because the model was developed for office workers. 
and in the 60s, maybe not many women or minorities working in the office. Um, but today, things changed. So there are other researchers trying to uh, compensate that and uh, adding more variables in the model and including more uh, subjects in the model. Uh, also, <coughs> there are other cultural um, impact on how you're feeling in terms of thermal comfort. Um, in general, people uh, live in near equators. They have higher tolerance of heat. People live in near, uh, you know, in Canada, in northern Canada, or in uh, Russia, they have higher tolerance to cold. Uh, and how do you account for that? It might be because of uh, metabolic rate. It's definitely uh, caused by clothing ins insulation, right? Clothing factors. But there are other factors culturally we may not know today and needs to be discovered. So it's not a perfect model, but everyone uses this. Building standards is written based on this model and not only in the US, but also in around the world. So um, that's basically what we know in general, what is thermal comfort and how are different uh, factors impact your thermal comfort. Okay, thank you.